Hey everybody, Jonah here, aka the one who drinks, and today we're going to be talking about champagne cocktails that can really shake up your New Year's get-togethers. To be clear, do not shake your champagne. It will explode. Maybe shake your champagne if you hate the people you're spending time with. Anyways, the point of this video is to sort of shy away from just the champagne that people drink on New Year's, but you have some anyways, so you might as well do something a little fun with them. We're going to be making four drinks today, three of which will be made in champagne flute. That way, you can just make your drink real fast and get back to the party. They're all delicious and incredibly simple. Come on, let's start the video. Today we're going to be starting with the Kir Royale. Now what's interesting about the Kir Royale is that it's originally, the Kir, just uses white wine. So it's white wine and creme de cassis. But today, to make it Royale, we'll be doing champagne. Again, there is nothing wrong with Prosecco or Cava or, you know, any, say, even just a sparkling wine. They all will get a very good result. I'm going to be starting with champagne and then as I run out, switching to cava. So, there's no judgment whatsoever. This recipe could not be simpler. You're going to start nice and easy with a little bit of creme de cassis. That's black currant. So for people who aren't familiar with that flavor, it is a very intense berry flavor. And not only does it work well by itself, but it really upgrades other berries. It is a heightener, so to speak. So what's great about this recipe is that a little bit of currant brings out a lot of the flavors of even just a, a mediocre champagne, which is perfect because we're not trying to blow out the wallet here. Not the right way to start the New Year's. So you're going to start nice and simple. You're going to go, they say do a quarter ounce. You can go anywhere between a quarter, two thirds of an ounce. It really depends on how much you like the black currant flavor. I'm a big fan of creme de cassis, so I'm going to go closer to the three quarters mark. And you just pour that right in. From there, you just cap with a little bit of champagne and you're ready to go. And you'll be getting that nice, a little bit lighter, but a nice dark color while you enjoy. And again, if you're not a huge fan of black currant, just add a little bit more champagne. It'll really balance out the ratio as well. Oh yeah. That's how you do it. Now there is one other approach, another recipe, same exact name, but a little bit different. And that's when you add some brandy. Now, as a brandy drinker, I really, I'm really just a cognac guy. So I'm going to add about three quarters ounces of cognac to the Kir Royale that I already made. And that can really brighten up the drink. Really adds out a couple of new flavors, especially since this was a, a newer cognac that I've recently discovered. I'm a huge fan. Let's give it a shot. Ooh. Guys, I gotta say, Kir Royale, already good. I enjoy it quite a bit. But this cognac, or your personal favorite cognac, or brandy, it really elevates the flavors. Because you have to remember that even cognac is made with a lot of fruitiness in it. So, the Creme de Cassis is heightening not only the flavors of the champagne you used, but also the flavors of whatever your favorite brandy slash cognac is. I mean, cognac is a type of brandy. But still, it really just brings it to the next level. And I'm really excited for you guys to try it. If you do, let me know which one you prefer. Do you like the cognac? Are you more of a guy who just, or a person who just prefers the classics, you know, no brandy involved, a little bit of creme and a little bit of champagne? To each their own, but I really want to hear what you guys think. 
Next up, we're going to be switching over to, again, a very simple, easy, and delicious cocktail, and this is simply known as the Champagne Cocktail. Very easy, but uh, be prepared for a little different take on the champagne you're used to. In fact, we're going to be switching over to the cava now, because uh, this bad boy's kicked. And you're going to be starting real simple. A nice cube of sugar, right at the bottom of the glass. So easy. You're going to then tab that up with a couple of dashes. The recipe usually calls for two to three dashes of Angostura bitters. I have a big bottle, as you can see, so I usually do one, one and a half dashes. One, and two. It really soaks up that nice sugar cube. We're not gonna do closed pours today because I really wanna emphasize how easy it is to make in the champagne flute. This is a really simple procedure, something that you, is very accessible and anybody can do. Next up, we're going to add, once again, three quarter ounce of cognac. If you prefer brandy, any type of brandy does work. I'm just a cognac guy, I want to make that clear. Right in the glass. Now, once we add the champagne, the sugar cube is going to react with the bubbles. Now what that means is that this drink can get very bubbly very quickly. And the longer it takes you to drink it, the different it's going to taste. That sugar is going to dissolve in the drink and slowly dissipate. So it's going to get sweeter over time. This is definitely a sipper if you prefer sweeter drinks. But if not, and you're just trying to uh, have a good time on New Year's, to each their own. We're going to be adding the kava now. And you just simply top off the glass. You're going to want to do a side pour so you don't get too much of the carbonation and the foam sitting on the top of your glass. Otherwise, it's not going to be drinkable for 15 minutes. Beautiful. And if you can see, that little bit of sugar is bubbling over. It's building that extra carbonation, and now the drink is going to top off pretty soon. Excellent. And there you have the champagne cocktail. That's delicious. The Angostura really takes a front seat on this. And if you're not familiar, Angostura are just bitters. Very, you know, run-of-the-mill, accessible, aromatic bitters that really elevate other flavors in drinks. Now, in a champagne, it's usually unheard of, but with the champagne cocktail, what it's doing is it's taking those flavors that are the most powerful, in this case, the cognac, and it's making it a little bit rounder, making it a little bit more friendly, so to speak. You know, you take a sip and you get those nice, warm notes without getting the, what I call them, the shoulder shimmies. You know, the woo -hoo! when you drink some, a little too hard liquor. With the sugar slowly dissipating over time, it's even becoming sweeter and interacting with those bitters. So you're getting these flavor notes that are really, honestly, original, you know? It, every single drink will be different depending on the type of uh, bubbles you use, depending on the type of cognac you use, or brandy you use. Every single drink will be different. And uh, I, this is just an excellent way to really do something a little different than you're used to with your champagne this New Year's. Next up, we're making what can only be described as a classic. Ernest Hemingway made this drink, and uh, needless to say, since he was one of the most prolific drinkers in American history, it's a bit of a butt kicker. And it's called The Death in the Afternoon. We're going to start very simply. The way that he describes the recipe is a jigger full of absinthe and then top with champagne until it's a nice opalescent color. And then you drink three to five of them slowly. But if we drink three to five of these slowly, 
it will certainly be a death in the afternoon. So, I'm going to show you his recipe, and then I'm also going to show you a more accessible one. So to start, we need absinthe. Forget all the stories you've heard about absinthe. It is accessible, it is legal, you can get it at probably your local liquor store. I personally get mine at Total Wine. St. George's has always been my go-to absinthe. It's really not that hard to find. Now, he says a jigger full. Now that could be one ounce, ounce and a half, maybe even two ounces. But to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go with one ounce. If you're not familiar with the flavor of, as, of absinthe, it's a very harsh licorice flavor. If you're not a fan of black licorice, you're probably not a fan of absinthe. But that being said, licorice adds a nice flavor when it is not the primary flavor of a lot of drinks. So you're just gonna go ahead and pour one ounce of absinthe. And then we top with champagne. I'm gonna use kava this time until, again, it's that nice, quote-unquote, opalescent color. And now hopefully you can see what I mean when I mention that opalescent. And there you have it. That is Ernest Hemingway's Death in the Afternoon. Whew. You may have heard that Ernest Hemingway is one of the biggest badasses in American history. And now that I know that he drank so many of these, it doesn't surprise me. A normal human being would be more than affected by what's happening here. Which means we can look into how a lot of modern day people take the death in the afternoon. And that actually isn't even that big of a difference. You just add a little bit of simple syrup. Most recipes will call for somewhere between a quarter of an ounce and a half an ounce. As you guys probably remember, I like my drinks a little sweeter, so I'm gonna go on the heavier side and do a full half ounce. Because that quarter is just not enough for how strong this drink is. I'll mix it just to be on the safe side. You don't need to, but my spoon is here and uh, I need this thing to be a little sweeter. I'm gonna get the shoulder shimmies when I drink too much liquor. Alright, let's see how this changes it. Much more accessible. Still a butt kicker, don't get me wrong. This is a strong drink. You drink three to four of these on New Year's Eve, you're not making it to midnight. But, add a little bit of sugar, it tones down that licorice, that sort of fennel flavor, and it makes it much more accessible. It went from, I don't know if I can drink this, to, I'm going to finish this once the episode is over, because otherwise, I'll be too hammered to finish it. Alright, now it's time for the last, but certainly not the least, drink of the evening. This is the only one that won't be made in a champagne flute, but it is still very easy to make and very delicious. This one is called the Monte Carlo. And today we're going to be making it inside a mixing glass. Aside from, obviously, your mixing glass and some champagne, I'm using kava this time again. You're also going to be adding in a little bit of gin and a little bit of lemon juice. You really want to make the botanicals the main ingredient, the main component of this drink. That way, all the flavors can sort of meld together in a basically a, like a floral symphony. It's going to be delicious. And then at the end, we'll add a secret ingredient. But for right now, we're going to add just a half ounce of gin. I'm using Citadel, which is my personal favorite, but I am very open to selling my soul if somebody wants to sponsor me. We're gonna be doing a half ounce of that gin today. And then we're gonna be adding in just a quarter ounce of the lemon juice. Then, a quick, simple quick stir. 
Make sure that it's nice and cold for when we add it into the champagne flute. Now we're just going to add in through our julep strainer right into the champagne flute. And then from there, we just top with champagne. Nice and easy. Again, a side pour is definitely the way to go here. Now this would already be a delicious cocktail, but we're missing that secret ingredient I was talking about earlier. And that's going to be creme de menthe. That flavor of mint really, it heightens every single botanical flavor we added in between the gin, between the lemon juice, between even the champagne, there are all these like fruity floral notes. And this mint is going to be sort of the nightcap that goes on each and every one of them. You're only going to be adding in a quarter ounce. Because we don't want it to take over the drink, but we definitely want it to be complimentary. And you'll even see as it changes color. Oh yeah. And there you have the Monte Carlo. Probably my number one most favorite champagne cocktail. It just adds so many different fun and light flavors without being too burdensome, without making you feel like you're worn down from a cocktail. This is honestly one of the best ways to go. Let's do some tasting. Mm. It's like I said. Those floral notes from the gin, the botanicals, the acidity from the lemon juice, and the grapes, that champagne, uh, all that bubbliness, the creme de menthe is just the, the dot. It's the tittle on an eye. It's that nice little headpiece that really, you don't even notice it at first. And then once you take your sip, once you're fully, you've, you've really enjoyed it, it sits in your mouth a little while and you taste this mint that just every single breath, you're just like, <sighs> mint. And it is nothing but delightful. I really, I encourage you guys to make all of the drinks seen before you today. But I think this one might be pretty popular at pretty much any New Year's party you guys go to. And there you guys have some of the most fun and honestly delicious cocktails that you can make with champagne that will really shake up, I think, your New Year's celebration. Let me reiterate, do not shake champagne. It will explode. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you try any of these, Please let me know. I'm genuinely curious. I want to know what you guys like, what you don't like. I want to make sure I'm making cocktails that people actually want to drink and not just a good idea of cocktails. While you're at it, why not like this video? Watch some of my other videos. Honestly, they're pretty fun and they will teach you how to make some delicious drinks. Lastly, why not subscribe? I really do put out a video so far every week, and the plan is to keep that up as long as I am getting good content. As you can see, we've already improved the channel. The video is so much bigger now, and it looks great by comparison. We're going to get the lighting all sorted out pretty soon. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. My viewers, my subscribers, friends and family, and honestly, everybody else who just enjoys a nice drink. I really appreciate you guys coming through. Until next time, my name is Jonah, and I am the one who drinks.